Good morning. I hope you can hear me right now well. It looks like you're getting what I'm doing. Um, and I'm trying to make sure I got this microphone. I have construction going on at the house today. So that's making it a little bit difficult to hear what I'm doing. They're adding in a, a new room to the house. And so it's a little noisy, but I want to cover um, flow charting and, and make sure that we do this correctly. I want to um, review with you uh, the link that I placed inside of um, Canvas. I want you to go and, and look at that in detail. It's uh, it's very important. It is a important document for yourself. You should be able to see this. There's a terminator that you can use. It's an oval. Um, there are processes, rectangle. All the decision points are diamond. Um, there's a data process that can be in the background. There's a document generation that might be a receipt or something in your case. And there's a subroutine. A subroutine or external process might be one that you don't control, but you're aware of. These others you're probably not using, but you might be using um, this one, this connector. Uh, even the off-page connector can be used that's here. This is the one I typically use, but in, in the book they talk about using this one. On the, on the circular connector and that's fine works just well there is some variability whenever you do a flow chart you want to decide on what symbols you're using so that everybody understands what they mean it's a language and so you have to define what things mean just like you would if you're speaking in a foreign language you have to get so you understand what the word means you can say it or express it correctly and that's what we're learning to do here we're learning to express express flow charts correctly so now I'm going to go back and we're going to share um, uh, this one again. Okay. And we're going to go here. Okay. So um, I went through and I've created a very basic flow chart based upon your lamp repair that was provided when you created one. Now, uh, on yours, I expect you have a title at the top, probably in about 16 or 18 font, point font. Uh, and I expect you to have this uh, history box at the bottom. Should be a title right here in the table. And you can say, you don't have to have take, you could actually put title up here at the top. Um, you put the title in, the author, that's who created it. Uh, the date, it was last revised in the revision number. And then the approval, who approved it and on what date. So it's very critical that you have this for your employees because what happens is that you need to be able to compare a new document you've got to a document you've had previously and determine which is the one you should be following. And if you get one that hasn't been approved, that has a newer revision number, you shouldn't use it until it's approved. Just real common sense stuff. This is so you can track your documents track changes of what's going on. Sometimes it'll even have uh, change control here at the bottom, what items were revised last time. Um, and in this, we have a process. This is the one that's created, the lamp doesn't work. You know, was the lamp plugged in and they, they nicely put in yes, no for us as we did this and says plug in the lamp, but the lamp still may not work. So you need to loop back through the process so you loop back through the process coming out of when you plugged in the lamp and you get to retest the lamp. Uh, lamp's plugged in now, so it's going to be yes, it flows down through here and it says light bulb burned out. So if it's yes, you replace the bulb and you loop back through the process again and you flow on down. And so now the bulb is not burned out and you come down, do we need to replace or repair the bulb? Uh, well, if we're going to replace it, we're going to dispose of the other lamp. This might be inventory controlled. It might not be. You could just throw it away. Or if you have to return it maybe to Amazon or wherever you purchased it, that would be replacing it. Uh, I mean, not replacing. Uh, yeah, that would be disposing, replacing or disposing of it. Um, typically, when you have a terminal connection, this just ends. But this process is a little bit strange we're actually going to buy a new lamp on this. And this is a process that's external to this process for testing. 
Uh, we've repaired it. We might make a decision to buy and go to a repair shop and get it replaced. Maybe that's taking it to your internal maintenance, letting them look at it. And then um, we get a repaired lamp received over here and we have off page connectors here, A and C. And when you scroll down to the next page, there's A and a C, these two line up, but we got a third one over here, it's B. When you roll back up the page, you're looking for a B, you see it's all the way here at the top. So that means that when this flows out of does the lamp work, no, it's looping again. There's it loops back to B, and then you go back up here to the wherever B is next, right up here, and it flows right, but does the lamp work? And so it runs through this process again. So if it's still not working, there are other issues and you're trying to find out. And then when you kind of, it is working, then the process, the whole process stops. Now, I still think it's a really good idea for you to go in and colorize uh, your, uh, your points on this. Like, I like making, this is just me, just nobody else has to do this, uh, but you use your own and I'll use shift. I think I can use shift here to pick up a number of elements and I can color all these at once. And I'll go right here, I'm gonna apply that. And so I like these process weaves ones that we're gonna go through. And let's see if I got another one up here, I do. Let's make them blue, a light blue or something uh, over here. And so what it does is it kind of starts giving you, oh, there's another light blue. Uh, yeah, that's a little about the same color. Go back. There we go. And then this one we can do, it's an external process. We could give it a, a very different color. Maybe we'll give it a, a purple color on here. And the idea that the colors help people follow similar, um, like disposing of the lamp, that could be an issue we might want to give it a different color so that people are a little more aware. We'll put a rose color on this, apply so it appears a little bit red. And so as you're walking down through this, this one's blue. And so they all are consistent. Not only does it look nice, it looks professional, but when you're skimming this with your eye, you quickly see, oh, I have decision points here, here, and here. And this is what I want to watch out for, what's going on. Uh, I have a decision point here. I know there's an issue that I got to pay attention to. There may be other things here, like if I got to dispose of it, is it an, I might put another diamond here. Is this an inventory item? If it is, then I need to notify uh, purchasing or inventory control so that we can have it uh, removed from our inventory control. Um, I typically leave the terminators and the page connectors white. They're just are what they are and um, very simple, very simple. But in this exercise that you should be have between 65 and 95 separate items on your page as you're going through it. I hope you have a, a good day and I hope you have fun doing this. This is a, um, a great exercise and I hope you have a good day. Thank you, bye-bye.